How to take your time. Whatever the merits of Proust's work, even a fervent admirer would be hard pressed to deny one of its awkward features length. As Proust's brother Robert put it, the sad thing is that people have to be very ill or have broken a leg in order to have the opportunity to read in search of lost time. And as they lie in bed with their limb newly encased in plaster or a tubercule bacillus diagnosed in their lungs, they face another challenge in the length of individual Proustian sentences, snake-like constructions, the very longest of which, located in the fifth volume, would, if arranged along a single line and standard-sized text, run on for a little short of four metres and stretch around the base of a bottle of wine seventeen times. Jacques Madeleine, a reader for the publishing house Fasquel, had been asked to look at Proust's bundle of pages. At the end of 712 pages of this manuscript, he had reported, after innumerable griefs at being drowned in unfathomable developments and irritating impatience at never being able to rise to the surface, one doesn't have a single, but not a single clue, of what this is about. What is the point of all this? What does it all mean? Where is it leading? Impossible to know anything about it. Impossible to say anything about it. Madeleine nevertheless had a go at summarising the events of the first 17 pages. A man has insomnia. He turns over in bed. He recaptures his impressions and hallucinations of half-sleep, some of which have to do with the difficulty of getting to sleep when he was a boy in his room in the country house of his parents in Cambrai. Seventeen pages, where one sentence goes on for forty-four lines. Since all other publishers sympathised with these sentiments, Proust was forced to pay for the publication of his work himself and was left to enjoy the regrets and contrite apologies that flowed in a few years later. But the accusation of verbosity was not so fleeting. At the end of 1921, his work now widely acclaimed, Proust received a letter from an American who described herself as 27, resident in Rome, and extremely beautiful. She also explained that for the previous three years, she had done nothing with her time other than read Proust's book. However, there was a problem. I don't understand a thing, but absolutely nothing. Dear Marcel Proust, stop being a poseur and come down to earth. Just tell me in two lines what you really wanted to say. The frustration of the Roman beauty suggests that the poseur had violated a fundamental law of length, stipulating the appropriate number of words in which an experience could be related. He had not written too much per se. He had digressed intolerably, given the significance of the events under consideration. Falling asleep? Two words should cover it. Four lines if the hero had indigestion, or if a Labrador was giving birth in the courtyard below. But the poseur hadn't digressed simply about sleep. He had made the same error with dinner parties, seductions, jealousies. It explains the inspiration behind the All England Summarise Proust competition, once hosted by Monty Python in a South Coast seaside resort, a competition that required contestants to precede the seven volumes of Proust's work in 15 seconds or less, and to deliver the results first in a swimsuit and then in evening dress. The first contestant was Harry Baggett from Luton, who hurriedly offered the following. Proust's novel ostensibly tells of the irrevocability of time lost, of innocence and experience, the reinstatement of extratemporal values and time regained. Ultimately, the novel is both optimistic and set within the context of human religious experience. In the first volume, Swan visits... But 15 seconds did not allow for more. A good attempt, declared the game show host with dubious sincerity, but unfortunately he chose a general appraisal of the work before getting on to specific details. The contestant was thanked for his attempt, commended on his swimming trunks and shown off stage. Despite this personal defeat, the contest as a whole remained optimistic that an acceptable summary of Proust's work was possible, a faith that what had originally taken seven volumes to express could reasonably be condensed into 15 seconds or less without too great a loss.